All right, over the next couple of videos, we're going to talk about one of the most fundamental aspects of working inside Photoshop, and that is through generating selections. Now, selections inside Photoshop are basically a way of isolating an area of your image to so you can work or make changes or effects to that specific area. So when you have an open document in Photoshop, as you're looking at right here, basically all the pixels are active. Everything's fair game to make changes to. So if I grabbed my brush tool, for instance, and just started painting in here, notice it's affecting the entire document. No, no matter where I paint, something is happening. By generating a selection, you're isolating your changes to a specific area. And the selection tools are located right here in the toolbar. We're going to start up here up top with the shape tools. As you can see, we have the rectangular marquee tool. And if I just go in here to my document and just drag out, you'll notice that I can drag out a square or a rectangular just by freely dragging out this object. And when I release my mouse, it turns into what's known as the marching ants selection area. And what this allows me to do is work specifically in this area without affecting anywhere, anything else in my image. So if I were to grab that paintbrush tool I was just using and clicked inside here and started painting, it will do the same thing. But when I go outside that area, you notice nothing happens. So it is isolating my changes only to the area I have selected. Now the other shape tool located inside there is of course the elliptical marquee tool. And this allows us to generate rounded shape selections. And just by freely dragging you can notice I get oval shapes, I can go into a more rounded shape. But if you want to constrain your selections to a very specific or a very perfect circle or a perfect square, you would simply add the shift key as you're drawing the selection. I'm going to, so I'm going to hold down my shift key and just drag out this box and you'll notice it gives me a perfect circle. Now once you've created a selection, what, if you take your cursor and move inside the selected area, you'll notice that it turns into a selection move tool, which if I click and drag, it'll allow me to reposition a selection over any specific area of the image. Now, when you're also using the shape tools to create selections, if you want to add to that area of the selection, or just even add another selected area in addition, to, this, to the already existing selected area, you would simply add the shift key as well. So if I hold down my shift key and drag from inside this selected area into the outer area, you'll see that it does in fact add it to that selection. And just the same, if I go over here, let's take that square marquee tool and I'll position this right over here. If I want to add a, another square selection over here on the other side of the document, simply hold down that shift key and then drag out that box accordingly. So now we have two selected areas all within the same image. So if I take that brush tool, again, painting in the area that's not selected, nothing happens. But if I go into those selected areas at the same time, it will paint inside there. So, quick and easy way of using those tools to generate selections. Now another way, where when you want to deselect an area of the image, you notice they did, that they just went away. The way you do that, let's go back in here and let's just draw out another square selection here. So there's my selected area. Now, one way of deselecting that area is simply dragging outside the selected area and going ahead and clicking once, and you'll notice that it go the selection goes away. Now, another way of doing that, of course, is if you've got a selected area, you can go under the Select menu, and here's where you will go in and make any kind of um, modifications or changes to your existing selections. But in this case, we want to look for this item right here, which is the Deselect. And you can also use the, use the keyboard shortcut, Command or Control D on your keyboard. But by selecting that item, it does the same thing. It deselects that area and allows me to continue to move on. Now, going back into modifying the selections, what I want to do is, let's say, for instance, on this image, I want to select the rim of this car, that rounded area there. Well, if I go in here and grab that elliptical marquee tool and drag my box out, it doesn't get that area just perfectly. I can probably get close to the size, but it's not selecting that area like I want it to. Well, I need to make some changes to it. So let's go under that select menu, and I'm going to go down here and, tr and grab the transform selection. And it will give me these free transform frame here, which allows me to modify it. I can change the size up and down, left to right, or I can grab any of the corner handles and modify the shape overall. But I can also rotate the selection. You notice if I drag outside here, I get the little bent arrow. So now I can rotate that selection just a little bit and then reposition it to get it a little bit more accurate into that specific area. I can drag this out, rotate it a little bit more, maybe squeeze that area in a little bit. And once I press enter, my selection is still active, but now it is more isolated to that specific area of the image, meaning I can make whatever changes I want to now. I can make corrections, I can even um, isolate this selection to its own layer, whatever I need to do. Now. Those are the basic shape tools. Now, another selection tool is right beneath here, and these are known as the lasso tools. 
And I'm just going to go into a blank document here just to demonstrate these. The lasso tools allow you to basically freely draw or basically freehand draw your selections. The basic lasso tool, of course, if you just take this and I just drag inside my document and just draw a shape, when I get to the end, no matter where I'm at, it's going to automatically close out that selection. So there is my currently active selection. So it allows you to draw around very odd shapes or abstract shapes just in a freehand style or even just for certain effects you want to achieve. You can just freehand draw that. The next tool under that is known as the polygonal lasso tool. And this, what it does, is allows you to basically freehand draw, but it also gives you straight edges on your selection. So I'm going to jump over to another document here, and let's say I wanted to select this stop sign and isolate it. Well, I would go ahead and use, probably use this polygonal lasso tool, and it will allow me to click. Now, once I click and drag off to an area, you can see that it's given me this straight line here. And I can just move to the next position I want it to be, and I'll click again. And we'll just go around to each corner of this sign, and you'll notice that it's leaving that sun, th those lines in there. And once I get to the end, where my starting point is, you'll see the cursor change into a little circle there. And that's telling me that I'm about to close out the selection, it's gonna become active. So once I click, you'll see, now that selection is currently active, and I can make any kind of changes I want to do inside of here. Now, let's say for instance that I've selected this area, but I've selected, right now the, so the stop sign itself is the active selection. What's, let's say I wanted to invert that selection. I want the outer area to be selected and not necessarily the sign itself. Well, it's simply a matter of going under the select menu and choosing this item here, inverse selection. And now you can see that the marching ants are around the edge here and it's also around the stop sign. But if I grabbed my brush tool like I did a moment ago and painted inside the sign, notice nothing happens until I come outside of that area. And now it's painting right outside that area there. Now the only other lasso tool, it's uh, one of the least commonly used ones, but it does work, um, is the magnetic lasso tool. Now, based on these settings up here, you can draw around a shape, and depending on the contrast between your object and the background, it will generate your selection based on that. So it's a quick and easy way of just drawing a selection when you have a high contrast subject against a background. And you'll notice it does the very same thing. Now it doesn't work as perfectly on all images. You will want to be careful depending on what type of images you're creating, but that is basically how those general selection tools work. Now in the next video, we're going to cover some of the a newer tool that was introduced back in Photoshop CS3, and we're going to talk about some of the tolerance setting tools like the magic wand.